Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly, we greet you in the magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, which we know is the head of the church. I do apologize for being a little delayed. Uh, we're trying. I was trying to fix the lighting in the um, office um, to make it a little bit brighter. All right, uh, everybody, welcome. Come on and come on in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Virginia Freeman. Uh, won't y'all do me a favor, as always, uh, like this video and share this video uh, to let everybody know that uh, Christ Temple, we are doing um, Bible study Facebook Live. Amen. Try to get as many people to come in as, as possible. Praise the Lord, Sister Melanie Edwards. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Gwen. Come on in. Come on in. Praise the Lord, Sister Tracy. Praise the Lord. Come on in. Let us know. Let's get... We only have about 13 viewers right now. We got 15. If we can uh, get at least 30, we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, call somebody. Text somebody. Uh, let them know that we're about to start uh, Bible study via Facebook Live. Bible study via, via Facebook Live call somebody. Praise the Lord, uh, Evangelist Deborah Jones. Praise the Lord, Brother Christopher. Praise the Lord, Pops. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother James. That's right. Praise the Lord. Tell people, tell them, get the word out of y'all. Get the word out. We are having Bible study tonight. I won't be before you long, uh, but I believe that uh, the Lord wants to say something tonight. And so uh, get as many people in as possible. Let's share, let's share, let's share, let's share, share it to your Facebook uh, so that way people can come on tonight. Go ahead and share it to your Facebook. Hey, Amen. Let's get the word out. Let's get the word out. Y'all, I feel like teaching tonight. Y'all feel like learning? We're going to learn together. Oh, Brother Jim, tell, tell Brother Jim I said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Latoya. Praise the Lord, Sister Mary Joy. All right, we got 21, y'all. Come on, we just, oh, 22, we're climbing. Praise the Lord, Brother Dane. Anybody else? We need about 30 people to come on here. Come on, y'all, share it. Make sure y'all share this video. Share you share this video. Praise the Lord, Sister Gwen. Praise the Lord. Share this video uh, so that we can get people viewing it. That's right. We want people to view that and let people know that we're live tonight. We want as many viewers as possible. Uh, we thank the Lord that he always makes a way out of no way. We thank the Lord for technology. Praise the Lord, Sister Jesse. Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank the Lord for this, that we have technology and by ways that we can still uh, have church, we can still have Bible class. Amen. Anybody? We got five, 25. We need five more. Come on, y'all. Come on. Hit somebody up. Tell them we have a Bible study. Hit somebody up. Tell them. It's Bible study night. We got 26. Just need a few more. Few more. Four more. We'll get oh 28. Praise the Lord, Sister Robin. Yes, indeed. 27. Somebody went off. Tell them to come back on. Uh-uh. The devil is a liar. Tell them to come back on. <laughs> yes, we're still having drive-in church on Sunday morning. Yes, we're still having drive-in church on Sunday morning. Come on. We just need a few more. We got 26 viewers right now. We can get just a few more if y'all can uh, have some people come in. Uh, I'll tell you what we'll go ahead and do is, is if we have any prayer requests, if you'd like to go ahead and comment the prayer request um, before we go into uh, the Lord in prayer. Any prayer request. Any prayer request. Uh, of course, let's remember the sick. Um, let's remember those um, who have this virus. Um, let's remember um, those in health care that have to be around ones who um, have the virus. Let's remember this, this um, nation. Let's remember the world. Uh, let's remember our president in a special way. Praise the Lord, Deacon Tropsler. Uh, see, I got a deacon on here. Hallelujah. Uh, but um, let's pray for the world. Let's pray for our president. Let's pray for our government. Uh, pray for those who have lost jobs. Pray for those who are laid off and not making any money right now. Uh, so there's a lot to be in prayer for. 
um, remember the Christ Temple as a whole, and remember Sister Robin's daughter-in-law, Kristen. All right. Hey, Amen. Anybody else before we, oh, we got 31 views. We'll go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for just another opportunity just to, just to come boldly to the throne of grace one more time. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your forgiveness. And Lord, we thank you, Father, uh, that we're able just to have another opportunity just to dive into your word, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in these last and evil days. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll, you'll bless us with wisdom and knowledge of your word. Help us to go in. Help us to come out. Lord, we ask that you feed us, Lord God, with wisdom and knowledge. Crown us with wisdom and knowledge. Lord, open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our understanding, open up our hearts, and open up our minds, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, Sister Kelvin. All right. Um, so tonight, we're just going to dive right in. Uh, since we're doing these live streams, I thought uh, we can be a little creative with it. So what we'll do the next few weeks since we're doing, since we have to be, um, uh, you know, away from each other, um, Bible studies, I said we can call this... Um, coffee and the word, coffee and the word. So, uh, maybe you don't have any coffee tonight. If you got some coffee, if you want to go ahead and put you, um, <laughs> a, a nice pot of coffee, praise the Lord, brother Chris. If you want to go ahead and put your nice pot of coffee on now, I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to be here all night. Come on church. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to put you some coffee, uh, put you some coffee on, get you some coffee. Look, I went through McDonald's and bam, I got my coffee. Hallelujah. I got me a caramel frappe. Uh, so uh, the w coffee in the word, that's what we'll call it. And so uh, if you ain't got no coffee, get you some juice or some water, some soda, some something. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So tonight we're going to uh, teach from the subject, pray, plan, and produce. Pray, plan, and produce. I'll say that again. Pray, plan, and and produce. Pray, plan, and produce. Praise the Lord, brother William. Let's turn to our script, to our Bibles, to the Scripture, Jeremiah chapter number twenty-nine, and verse number twelve. Jeremiah chapter number twenty-nine, and verse number twelve. And since I can't see y'all <laughs> uh, physically. If you don't mind, um, if you have Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and verse number 12, if you can just yell back at me and say, I got it. Uh, <laughs> yell back at me and say, I got it. And if you got it, we'll be able to move on. Is that all right? Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse E, verse 12. I'm sorry, I was about to say verse 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 12. Y'all got that? It says this. Then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Then shall ye call upon me, ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. The first, the first word we're going to deal with, like we said, is the word pray. The word pray. Somebody shout pray. Now, uh, some people may not know um, what prayer is. They may not know how to pray. Uh, it's very simple. Prayer is basically communication with God. Um, be mindful that not only is it communication with God, um, but it's a two-way uh, communication line, which means uh, we don't have to do all the talking. Uh, but but God uh, yet lives. He still lives. And not only does he still live, but he can still speak. He can still communicate. There are some that believe that he no longer speaks in an audible voice. Yes, we know that he does speak through um, a song. He does speak through his word. Uh, he can speak through somebody else. Um, but he also can speak for himself. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't mind, just look at somebody that may be in the house with you and say, God can speak for himself. <laughs> God, God can speak for himself. And so prayer is two-way communication with God. But not only that, he wants to have communication with us. God wants to have communication with us. He desires to have communication with us. And so what you have to realize is, is realize that the Lord is always listening. God is always listening. He always has his ears to us. And so knowing that God is always listening, 
we can take uh, assurance of the fact that prayer is just our direct line to him. Uh, I always tell people, you should always start out with prayer, um, repenting, asking for forgiveness, praising God, and then let your request be made known. You get that? Prayer is repenting, praising him, and then let your request be made known. I always tell people, before you ask God for anything, praise God for everything. Because if you're not careful, prayer will turn into the, Lord, I need, I need, I need, I need. Give me, give me, give me, give me. I want, I want, I want, I want. And so I always say, start out prayer by repenting, then move from repenting to praise, and then from praise to let your request be made known. Now, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter number four. Philippians chapter number four. Can y'all hear me okay? Philippians chapter number four. And verse number six, Philippians chapter number four and verse number six. Let's see what it says. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, uh oh, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Did y'all hear that? He said, be careful for nothing. Quit worrying about stuff. Listen, what we're talking about tonight, the pray, plan, and produce, is everything that God wants us to do while we're under um, these conditions, while we're going through what we're going through. Uh, you know, can't be really out in the public much, can't be around each other much. And so God has given us this time, uh, um, basically, to build a relationship with him. And so what he's saying is, he said the first thing is, pray. Be careful for nothing. Don't stress about nothing. Don't get upset about nothing. Don't worry about nothing. Hallelujah. He says, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. Well, well, if you know everything that's going on in the world right now, how can you tell me be careful for nothing? Well, God, is, we can still take our problems to the problem solver, right? He still has power, right? He's still sovereign. He's still omnipotent. He's still omnipresent. He still fills all space. Amen. He's still in control. So he says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer. That's the problem. I think many of us have forgot and lost our prayer life. God is calling us back to prayer. He said, with supplication and with thanksgiving. Most of the time when we pray, we either complain or asking about something. But he says, I want you to take your prayers and connect them with thanksgiving. The Lord, I know how things are right now, but I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Even though I don't see it, I still thank you for what you're going to do. Now, the plan is, is that they're wanting to open up everything or open up a whole lot more things uh, Easter week. And I'm telling y'all right now, if they let us back in this church on Easter Sunday, <laughs> we're going to have to pay to get some new carpet because I, I feel like we're going to dance all over the sanctuary. Who knows what's gonna, what we're going to face tomorrow? We don't know what we're going to face tomorrow, but check this out. We know who holds tomorrow. We know who's in control. He says, so all I need you to do is be prayerful, have prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He says, let your request be made known unto God. After I move from repenting, to praising God, now I can let God know what it is that I need. Not really, not necessarily what I want. He didn't, he, he never promised to give us what we wanted. He just said he promised to supply all of our needs. Food, you got it. Water, you got it. Shelter, you got it. Come on, somebody. Clothes on your back, you got it. He promised to supply every one of our needs. Cool. So what he says is, take, be careful for nothing. What he's saying is, any anxiety, any discomfort, any uneasiness, check this, take them to God. If you're stressed out right now, if you're upset, if, if you're confused about what's going on in the land, and you don't know what, what, what we're up against next, and you don't know what to look forward to, he said, don't worry about none of that. Take all them worries, bring them to me. He said, he said, take all them worries and bring them to me. 
Because one thing about God is God has a way of erasing all your stress, erasing all your anxiety, erasing all your discomfort. He has a way of erasing all of them. Check this out. And replacing them with a peaceful mind. They said that um, somebody in Lawrence County has uh, tested positive coronavirus. And everybody in Lawrence County and Ironton is going crazy because they're like, oh, man, this is close to home. Who knows? You may be walking next to somebody at Walmart that has coronavirus and you have no idea. I ain't worried about it, though. I'm not going to live my life in fear. I'm going to live it in faith. I'm not going to be stressed out. I'm going to live it in faith. Now, it's amazing that everybody wants to be practical now. Everybody wants to be cautious now. And we do have to be cautious. But we're, we're, we're almost um, putting cautiousness up here and spirituality down here. And, 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 and I'm getting a little nervous uh, because when you have a headache, oh, you're, 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 your spirit is through the roof. When you're sick, your spirit is through the roof. When you, go, when you have the flu, your spirit's through the roof. But because something that may kill you, oh, oh we got to be cautious as church folk. Come on. Come on. We got to start believing what it is that we read. God said, don't worry about all this stuff. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about nothing. You just be in prayer. If there's anything that the nation needs right now, it's more prayer. It's more prayer. All right, guys? Let's see here. Uh, Psalms chapter 102, Psalms 102, Psalms 102, today was a beautiful day, it's going to be beautiful tomorrow too, I might grill out, Psalms 102 and verse 17, Psalms 102 and verse 17, he will regard the prayer of the destitute destitute and not despise their prayer <clears throat> it's my allergy saints it's not corona the devil is a liar come on church he will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer in other words god doesn't play favoritism church he's not going to put one's prayer over your prayer because he has no respect to person He's so much God that he can answer your prayer and my prayer all at the same time. That's why I told y'all, we can't stop praying now. Now is not the time to stop praying now. We got to pray now more than we've ever prayed. Because not only can he hear my prayer, but he can hear your prayer all at the same time. Church, that's a mighty God. That's a mighty God. Uh, now, it was... If, if two people are calling you at the same time on the phone, you're trying to listen to both of them, you have to tune one of them out every once in a while or because you're, you're going to get sidetracked by multiple conversations going on at the same time. But when it comes to God, God can listen to both the, all of us at the same time. And check this, work out our situation all at the same time. Trust me, church. He's God. He's God. All right. First Thessalonians, chapter number five. First Thessalonians. Thank you, Lord. First Thessalonians, chapter number five, and verse 16 through 18. First Thessalonians, chapter number five, verse 16 through 18. Sorry, y'all, that there's just a bare back wall. <laughs> Next week, it'll be a little bit better. Come on, church. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says this. The very first scripture, the very first one it says in 16 is, Rejoice evermore. We can stop right there. That's how I know somebody's been praying. That's how I know somebody's been praying. You give me somebody who's praying, and I'll show you somebody who's been praising God all week long. He said, if you're praying, he said, rejoice evermore. What am I rejoicing about? Because I know I didn't gave it to God. I didn't gave it to God. This problem that I had, I gave it over to God. I let God handle it. Why, why am I fretting? Why am I upset? Come on, somebody. You got to let God have it. He said, rejoice evermore. He said, then verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. What does that mean? You got to pray without stopping. 
This is not the time to pray. I mean, to stop praying, church. This is not the time to stop praying. We got to pray. I'm trying to hammer this into you. We got to pray as ever before. He said, in everything, look at verse 18. In everything, woo, not just some things, not just this or that, not just good things, not when things are just coming your way. Although I'm also going to praise him when that check comes from the government uh, that they promising us. Hallelujah. He said, but in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, there's a, there's, that, that's a, that verse number 18 is a full verse right there. It's a full verse right there because he said, everything give thanks. That's number one. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what it sounds like. I don't care what's coming. I don't care what's been. He says, and everything give thanks. And everything give thanks. Are you going to always feel like it? Mm-mm. Because mm -mm, it don't always feel good. He said, but in everything, give thanks. Uh, not because you feel like it or because you want to. He said, because it's the will of God. Now, now I'm about to mess you up. I'm about to mess you up right here. Because see, some of y'all still believe in Trinity. He Come on now. The will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If there was a trinity in which there's not, because that's not even biblical. If there was a trinity, how could God be in Christ if Trinitarians believe that God is superior to Christ? He said, but the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Jesus said, when you seen the Father, you seen me. Because Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. He said, but in everything, give thanks because this is the will of Jesus. Yeah. What? Why am I? Oh, I'm getting excited. Why am I giving thanks though? Why does he want me to give thanks? This is why. God wants you to learn to praise him in it before you get out of it. God wants to want, mm, God wants you to learn to praise him in it before he brings you out of it. I was telling uh, one of my co-workers today, uh, I said, I've been enjoying life since it's been going on. I've been enjoying life. I'm not stressing myself out. I'm not worrying. Hallelujah. I don't have no anxiety about it. Holly, I'm not pulling my hair out with the, the little bit of hair I got. I'm not pulling my teeth out. Come on, somebody. Because I'm trusting God. For he that says he will come, he shall come, and he will not tarry. I wish y'all would just, whoo, I wish y'all share this live stream right now. This is a good, that's a good place to share this live stream. He. So what he's saying is, he's saying, keep praying. Keep praising God. And I promise you, he'll never stop filling our lives with love. If you want to feel the love of God consume you, overwhelm you, move into your room, move into your house, move into your car when you're driving. If you want to feel his love, have communication with him. Pray to him. Talk to him. Come on, church. Praise him. Mark chapter number 11. Y'all, let me tell y'all how good God is. A couple days ago, it was saying that it was supposed to rain this Sunday. But now it looks like it's going to be sunny and 70 some degrees on Sunday. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Which means, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We are having drive in church service. Hallelujah. So if you didn't get to make last Sunday, make this Sunday. Matter of fact, bring somebody with you. Call somebody and tell them to meet you over at Christ Temple on the lawn. Amen for driving church service. Mark chapter number 11. Mark chapter 11 and verse 25. Mark chapter 11 and verse 25. He says, and when you stand praying, forgive. Uh-oh. If you have ought against any, 
that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your transpass transpassers. Woo! Now, we in quarantine right now. We ain't supposed to be going nowhere. Come on, somebody. Maybe, just maybe, God has given you a long time with him. Check this. While you're doing all this praying, search your own heart. Now, I'm not talking about searching somebody else's heart. Don't be nosy. Worry about yourself. Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But, but, but take, take inventory of your own heart and say, Lord, do I have anything? Do I have any odd feelings? Do I have any hatred? Do I have any bitterness towards somebody else in my heart? Because listen to what he says. If you have odd against somebody, then your heavenly father cannot forgive your trespasses. Which means all you're doing is stacking up the deck. Lord, I need you to do this. Lord, I want you to heal me. Lord, I want you to make a way. Lord, I want you to deliver me. Lord, I want you to provide. But you don't like nobody. You can't stand nobody. You can't speak to nobody. You talking about everybody. Come on, somebody. Search your own heart. Say, Lord, shine your light from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, Lord, take it out. I need you to take it out. I need you to take it out. Take it out and strengthen me. Lord, I want to be right. I want to make the rapture. And by me making the rapture, I, I can't have nothing in my heart. Whew, that take, that, that's enough for a drink right there. Oh, that is so good right there. Mm, that frappe is so good. Make sure there's nothing in your heart. You can't have nothing in your heart against nobody. See, see, we do this. We come to church, we clap. We dance, we sing, we get, we have a good time. But I'm learning that a lot of people are still leaving service with bitterness in their heart against somebody, with hatred in their heart against somebody, evil in their heart against somebody. And I'm talking about the people of God. Oh, I have the love of Jesus. No, you don't, because you can't even speak to people in the hallway. Come on, somebody. Make sure you forgive others. you got to forgive them. Not for them, but for you. So that God can forgive you. Forgive others. Look at somebody and say, you got to forgive them. you got to forgive them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Because I'm telling you, some of this stuff you're holding on to is going to cost you eternity. I don't care what they did to you. What they done to you. What you think they did. What you think they done. Honey, if you got something against somebody, you got to forgive them. Especially if you saying you saved, you got to forgive them. I feel this thing on live stream. Somebody's hanging on to something. Somebody's holding something in their heart. I don't know if it's old hurt, bitterness. I don't know what it is. But I'm telling you right now. If you're going to make heaven, you got to get your heart right with people. Yeah. Get it right. Look at somebody and tell them, say, get it right. Some of y'all been holding stuff against people for years and you can't get over it. Well, it just takes time to forgive them. How much time do you got? How much time do you need? I'm learning that some people do not forgive simply out of pride. They don't want to forgive. They want to hold on to it. But I promise you, if you want to be forgiven, you got to forgive people. Ain't no sense of you doing all this praying and you holding stuff against people in your heart. Because I'm, you, you let me tell you, let me tell you something. God ain't listening to you. Oh, that, that, that deserves another drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, des that deserved another drink. God ain't listening to you. You got to get it right. Amen. Matthew chapter number five and verse number six. Matthew chapter number five, verse number six. Thank you all so much for coming on here, watching the live stream. 
Tonight, we're talking about pray, plan, and produce. Pray, plan, and produce. Right now, we're dealing with the last scripture on pray. Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are they which do a hunger and thirst after righteousness. For what? They shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. My constant prayer is, Lord, keep on feeding me. Whoo! Lord, keep on feeding me. Lord, 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 I, 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 I want to drink from the fountain that never runs dry. Lord, I need more of you and less of me. I need more of you and less of me. Praise the Lord, Sister MJ. Lord, I desire more of you. I got to have more of you. How many of y'all know without God, you would not have the activity of your limbs? Without God, you wouldn't even be able to blink your eyes. You can't make it without God. That's why I always tell y'all, y'all ain't got to pump and prime me to praise God. I know where he's brought me from. I know what he's done for me. Come on, somebody. I don't need a praise team to praise him. I don't need the instruments, even though I like them. I don't need them to praise him, to praise him. Honey, because I found out in my darkest hour, I've learned how to praise him when the organ was shut down. I've learned how to praise him when we put away the drums. I've learned how to praise him when I didn't have a choir. I've learned how to praise him when I was in the comfort of my own house. I've learned how to praise him, church. So what he's saying is, uh, be humble in your prayer life. And if you don't have a prayer life, develop a prayer life. Let me say that again. If you don't have a prayer life, please develop a prayer life. Come on now. Come on, church. I see some saints that ain't on here. Call them. Call them. Tell them to get on here. So we dealt with prayer. Next, we're going to deal with plan. Everybody say plan. We're almost done. I'm not going to hold you forever tonight. Plan. Let's look in Proverbs chapter number 16 and verse number three. I miss y'all. Christ Temple, I miss y'all. I'm, I'm having withdrawals. I am, but I'm telling y'all when we, when we get back in this place, whoo, Lord have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. It's going to be amazing. But listen, if you missed driving church last Sunday, make sure you're there this Sunday because the spirit of the Lord was here last week and I'm anticipating another move from the Lord on this week. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. You should be praying in the comforts of your house. You can't go nowhere. You should be taking most of your day to talk to the Lord. Lord, I need to do this. I need to get right. Come on, somebody. I need to straighten up. I need to get closer to you. Now that you've prayed, now you got to have a plan. He said, commit thy works unto the Lord. How often are you going to pray during the day? How often are you going to read his word during the day? Come on now. How often are you going to take our time to praise him? Commit thy works unto the Lord. Lord, what is it that I can do once we get back in the church? What are some things I can do in the church? Lord, I want to put my hands to work. Pastor ain't got to beg me to do anything. I'm going to want to do whatever I can put my hands to. Come on, church. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. But you got to have a plan. Come on, somebody. You got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. Let's look in Jeremiah. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Jeremiah 29, 11. This was one of my favorite scriptures. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Y'all, I miss y'all. I can't wait to see y'all again. <laughs> Somebody said, oh my goodness, I'm going to be Gaining weight because of this coronavirus. All I'm doing is staying in the house. I'm going to gain weight. Uh-uh. Not if you're fasting. Come on, church. Uh-oh. We got to fast. All right. Jeremiah 29 and 11. We'll talk about planning. Plan. Now, uh, realize that God has a plan for you. Come on, church. So many times we wonder what our plan is for ourselves or for our lives. 
Uh, but realize that God has a plan. This is where it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. An expected end. Eee! For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. This is why I keep telling y'all, saints during this time and during this season, we have no reason to fear. We have no reason to fear. God, God is thinking about us. And not only is he thinking about us, but he ain't thinking no evil about us. He's thinking things of peace and not of evil to give us an expected end. Can y'all just do this again? Because I wish I could just high five y'all right now. I'll high five you over the phone. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we coming out of this. Hey, if you ain't got nobody in the house with you, I want you to pat yourself on the chest and say, I'm coming out of this. Y'all going to make me act up. I'm here in the office at the church. Y'all going to make me act up. We are coming out of this. This is only a temporary situation, but we're coming out of it. Now, how we're going to be, whether we're going to be weak or we're going to be strong, is determined by us when we get out of this. When I come out of this, I want to be stronger than ever. Mm. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He, now listen, church, he's already told us in Revelations that in the end, we win. Woo! We got this, church. We got this. We got this. All we got to do is keep on doing what we're doing. Tell somebody, I'm coming out of this. <laughs> I'm coming out of this. My ladder shall be greater than my past. Woo! Y'all gonna make me act up, Lord Jesus. I'm trying to, I'm trying to behave. I'm trying to behave. Hey, I just need you to encourage somebody. Tell them, we coming out, we coming out. I know we hear that all the time, but I'm serious. We coming out of this. We coming out of this. We coming out of this, but you gotta have a plan. Lord, when I come out of this, this is where I wanna be in you. I know I ain't been praying a lot like I should, but when I come out of this, my prayer life is going to be more powerful. My witness is going to be more powerful. My anointing is going to be more powerful. Why? Because God has given me an expected end. Somebody may say, what is an expected end? An expected end, an expected end means God is hooked up with you, cord to cord. I'm hooked up with God. He's hooked up with me. And since we're hooked up together, he's going to take care of me. How many of y'all know tonight that God is taking care of you? Come on, church. Let me say something. We've been in this for a couple weeks now. We ain't never went hungry. We ain't never went hungry. We ain't never been in want. We ain't never been in need. You want to know why? He said, every need I shall supply according to his riches and glory. Come on, somebody. We coming out of this. Praise the Lord, Pastor Helen Wolf. Psalms chapter number 20. I feel this thing. Mm, mm, mm. Psalms 20. And verse 4. Yeah, Lord. Psalms 20. And verse 4. Grant thee according to thine own heart. And fulfill all thy counsel. Grant thee according to thine own heart. And fulfill all thy counsel. Let's look in. I'm trying to skip a little couple more. Because I don't want to hold you all night. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 9. Uh, Proverbs chapter 19. <laughs> Come on church. Y'all know I'm not used to this live streaming one-on-one -on -one like this, but we're going to do it. We're making it work. Proverbs twenty, uh, Proverbs 19.21. Proverbs 19. Sister Orlando's going to knock me out. Sister Orlando's putting the scriptures on here for us, and we appreciate Sister Orlando and all that she does for us. 
You talking about a work in somebody in the church. Proverbs. Christ Temple is a blessed church. We got a lot of people that do a whole lot of work in the church. We appreciate you. Proverbs 19.21. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord is the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. We know you have a plan for your life, but you have to ask yourself, what is God's plan for my life? Then you have to ask yourself, is my plan lined up with God's plan? Is my plan lined up with God's plan? I tell people all the time, they say, I want this job, I want this job, I want this job. We pray that they get the job. They get the job, we don't never see them again. And I'm a firm believer that anything that takes you away from God wasn't for you. You got to make sure that your plan is lined up in the plan of God. If your plan is lined up in the plan of God, he just promised you. He just promised you. That he'd take care of you. He just promised you. He'd give you an expected end. Alright. Psalms 90 and 12. Last one for. Uh, plan. Psalms 90 and 12. Come on church. I love y'all. I miss y'all. I can't wait to throw my arms around y'all. Y'all hear me? I can't. I can't wait. I love me some Christ temple. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I'll say that again. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Hmm. Our time here on earth is limited. Some people think we live forever here. We're not. We're just passing through here. We're, we're not meant to live here forever. Matter of fact, I don't want to live here forever. Come on, somebody. But what are you doing with the time that you have right now on this earth? Teach us the number of our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Apply what it is that you are planning. If you want to get closer to God, let's do it. Apply it. If you want to pray more, let's do it. Get up in the mornings and pray. Stay up at night and pray. Lord, this year I want to go to church more. Come on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Bring somebody with you. Bring a friend. Bring your neighbor. Bring your family. Because I've learned, I, I, I've, I've been uh, uh, trying to offer this to the church that you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. Come on, somebody. But you got to step out on faith. So we talked about prayer. We talked about planning, and the last thing we're going to talk about is produce. You got your prayer, you got your plan, and now it's time to produce. Time to produce. Matthew 7. Y'all enjoying this Bible study tonight? I don't know about y'all, I'm hungry. Last night I had some ribs, some cabbage. Some cornbread and some pinto beans. And tonight I'm going to have the same thing. Hallelujah. Matthew. We're talking about producing now. We done talked about prayer. We done talked about planning. Now we're going to put it in the work. We're going to produce it. Matthew 7. 17 through 18. Matthew 7. God bless y'all. 17 through 18 says, Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Hmm. Ask yourself, what kind of tree are you? If you're a good tree, you're going to bring forth and produce good fruit. But if you're a corrupt tree, guess what? You're going to bring forth some evil, nasty, rotten fruit. You can tell who's on the Lord's side by the fruit that they bear. 
when we come out of this coronavirus and we're able to, to come back out again, come on, somebody. Come on now. If we, when we come out uh, and, and we do what we want to do, what we've set our plans to do, what we've prayed for, and, and we put it to work, oh, man, we're going to be a bad somebody. We're going to be untouchable. We're going to be so anointed that we're going to be a, we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Come on, somebody. Someone said, if you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you always got. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, you got to do some. You got to do something different. You got to shake some things up. You got to do things different ways. Now, the first the first year of me pastoring the church, I didn't make a whole lot of changes because I was settling in. The second year of me pastoring, I found out that in order to get different results, we had to change up a few things. And they've been very positive things. We've seen the fruit. We've seen the fruit that's come out of it. The fruit is, is producing good fruit. People are getting saved. People are getting delivered. But it's because we had to do something different to get different results. I want you to set a goal while you're in your house right now. Since you can't come out in the public and, you know, do what we're doing. I want you to set goals during this time. Set yourself some goals. So that way when you come out of this, when you come out of Egypt, you can produce what it is you were setting before you. Come on, somebody. James, chapter number two. The book of James. Book of James. My iPad is freezing up, it looks like. James, chapter number two. Good thing I know the word. Hallelujah. Verse number 26, James chapter 2, verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Listen, what good is it for you to have the spirit of God, but not work or exercise the spirit of God in you? Come on now. For some of us, how long have we been letting the Spirit of God lay dormant in our lives? When I heard him say, stir up the gift. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, just hit your belly. Hit your belly. Say, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Lord, bring me to the place that you want me at in you. Take me back to the place where I first received you. Give me my honor back. Give me my reference for you back. Come on, somebody. I want to be pleasing in your sight. When I pray, I want to know without a shadow of a doubt that I have reached heaven's headquarters. Help me to say yes to your will. Help me to say yes to your way. My, my plans for my life isn't as, isn't as important as your plans for my life. Come on, somebody. So it's time to produce, church. It's time to produce. Set yourself some goals. Meet them goals. You can do it. Tell somebody, you. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Somebody say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Yeah, that you, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Whatever goal you set before you, as long as you're walking in the will of God, you can meet them goals with prayer, with a plan, and by producing. You can do it. You can do it. You can do all things through Christ, not without Christ. Woo. Come on, somebody. You can't do nothing without Christ. But you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. Come on now. We can get through this, church. We can get through this. First John, two more scriptures. First John. Four and four. First John. First John. First 
1 John 4 and 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hmm, let me say that again. Ye are of God, little children, and, over, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If y'all don't mind, can y'all just look at somebody and say greater is inside of you? <laughs> greater is inside of you. Pastor, how come you ain't fell apart? How come you ain't lost your mind? How come you ain't having a nervous breakdown? How come you ain't stressed out? How come you ain't walking around acting cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Ooh, honey, because I got greater on the inside of me. I'm a king's kid. I'm a lender, not the borrower. I'm above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. I'm a king's kid. I know that my daddy has everything under control. And for that, I'm not scared of nothing. Last scripture. Ooh, I know y'all glad about it. I know y'all glad about it. Last scripture. I've had y'all for an hour now. Last scripture. St. John, chapter number 14, and verse 12. He, St. John, I'm telling you, whatever your plan is, whatever plan God has for you, you can achieve it, church. You can, you can achieve it. You can achieve it. Have y'all enjoyed this? I hope you have. St. John, chapter 14, and verse 12, it says, Verily, verily. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, check this, the works that I do shall ye do also. Uh-oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, let's back up now. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Matter of fact, can we just keep on reading? Can we keep reading? Verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Ooh. Verse 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Y'all gonna make me, I'm about to lose my mind in here. Whoo! Because that wasn't even no scripture in tonight's Bible class. But I had to keep on reading. Verse 14. St. John 14 and 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Mm, 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 mm. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Ask him, church. What it is that what is it that you need from him? What is it that he, you've been desiring? He said he'd give you the desires of your heart. Lord, I need you to protect me through during this 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 thing that's going on. I need you to protect me. I need you to protect my family, protect my wife, protect my kids, protect the church, protect the members of the church. Lord, I need you to protect, protect the tri-state, protect the nation, protect the world. Protect us, God. Anything you should ask in my name. Woo! I'm going to go ahead and do it even though I ain't preaching. What's his name, church? What's his name? His name is Jesus. Did you know that there's so much power just in that name, there's healing in that name. My God, I got to let y'all go. There's deliverance in that name. Come on. There's saving power, keeping power in that name. The name of Jesus is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. Woo! Y'all better leave me alone tonight. His name is Jesus. 
He ain't just maybe. He's just not. He's not just Mary's baby. He's Mary's God. His name is Jesus. When I'm in trouble, Jesus. When I'm hurting, Jesus. When I'm sad, Jesus. When I feel lonely, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus in the evening. Woo! So much power. So much power. Cast out devils in his name. Whew. The sick recover in his name. Come on, somebody. The name of Jesus. Have we forgot the name? In this hour, in this time, have we really forgot the name? I think it was today they had National Day of Prayer. And National Day of Prayer. The scripture says, if my people, which were called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. But I'm finding out God's got some people, but everybody ain't God's people. Mm. Think about that. He said, if you have not the spirit of God, you are none of his. Church, let's get back to praying. Let's start planning. And let's start producing. I don't know about y'all, but I believe that God has some great things in store for everybody under the sound of my voice. For everybody who's tuning in tonight, I believe that God has got great things in store for you. I believe that God's got some great plans for you. He's got blessings for you. He's got, he's got gifts for you that you ain't even unwrapped yet. Come on, somebody. But you just got to hold on a little while longer. Change is coming. But before change comes, let's change. Let the change start in here. Lord, I want to get closer to you. I want to be more like you. Come on, somebody. So that way, when all this is over with, I'm going to come out stronger. I'm going to come out greater. I'm going to come out more anointed. I'm going to come out closer to you. I'm going to come out more loving. If I had an enemy, I want to be so prayed up, I can walk up to him and hug him around the neck and tell him that I love him. This year, is the year of the abundance of the rain. Now, hold on. Let me get another drink. Somebody can say, Pastor, you said that this year was the year of abundance of rain, but it looks like ain't been no rain. It looks like it's been a whole lot of hell. The abundance of rain isn't necessarily just blessings, but the abundance of rain could be a season of growth. I found out that flowers, vegetables, come on somebody, cannot grow without water. You got to have some rain so that you can appreciate the sun as well as the rain. You can appreciate the good as well as the bad. Christ's temple, keep praying. Keep planning and keep producing. God bless you. Let's not forget the announcements. I hope you've enjoyed Bible class. I've enjoyed it. I hope it was a blessing to you. I hope we all learned something on tonight. Let's not forget the announcements. Everybody, uh, continue to stay safe. Um, everybody, continue to stay in, um, in, in your house if you can at all possible. Uh, continue to Continue to wash your hands. Continue to um, sanitize. Um, continue to try to keep your distance with people. Um, uh, let's continue to check on our elderly to make sure they are okay. Amen. We also have a YouTube channel. So after this Facebook Live, you could also go and view it on via YouTube. You type in on the YouTube bar, uh, Christ Temple Ashland. And you will see uh, our new YouTube, thanks to Brother Chris Chandler, 
and Sister Olanda. You'll be able to see our videos on YouTube also. All you have to, and, and if you can, please subscribe. Push, this, push the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Amen. So our videos are not only just on Facebook, but they're also on YouTube as well. Amen. Uh, uh, you're very welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. I love y'all. I hope y'all know that I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And uh, I hope, I hope, I want y'all to know that uh, I'm not just only trying to encourage y'all, but y'all have been encouraging me more than you ever know. Uh, y'all been encouraging me. Y'all been encouraging my family. Um, more than you ever know. And so I just appreciate all of you. I hope you know that I that I love you and that I appreciate you. Um, also, let's not forget, let's not forget, guys, uh, that this Sunday, that's right, this Sunday uh, 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 is Drive-In Church Sunday. Drive-In Church Sunday is this Sunday. Amen. At 11.30. We will start at 11.30 a.m. This Sunday. Now, uh, if you wasn't here last week, I really want to see you this week. Amen. I want to see more people come out this week. Amen. Uh, this Sunday at 1130 a.m., bring, come in your car, pull up on the lot, stay in your car, and we're going to have a Holy Ghost filled time. If you missed last week, you missed a treat because the Shekinah glory of God was all over the place outside. Amen. So come on out this week. Come on out this week. We want to see your face in the place. Come on out this week and help us lift up the name of Jesus. Excuse me. Help us lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Sunday night, we will be live streaming services from the sanctuary. And again, next Wednesday, I will be live streaming Bible study from uh, the headquarters, Christ Temple Church in my office. And remember, next Wednesday, get you some coffee. If you ain't, if you don't like coffee, bring you something to drink to sip on uh, during Bible study. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I love you guys. I love you guys. And uh, so please, please, please do not forget drive in church service this Sunday, 1130 a.m. outside on the front lawn. Please be safe. Stay prayed up. Check on each other. Ask about each other. And we will get through this. Let's remember Sister Gwen's granddaughter, Dominique. Many of us remember Dominique. Let's remember her. Uh, she is in Florida and she has the coronavirus. Um, I don't think the symptoms are that bad uh, as of right now. And we're going to pray that they don't get bad, that they don't get worse. We're going to pray that uh, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, we're going to pray that he heals her. And makes her every which way whole. Amen. Again, invite somebody to service this week. Invite them to service. I don't want to wait till Easter Sunday to pack out the place. Uh, but invite somebody this week, this Sunday. This Sunday. It's going to be beautiful. It's supposed to be 70 some degrees and sunny. Invite somebody out this Sunday. Amen. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Keep praying for us. God bless you.